Welcome to Gu Dao Jingxing, Walking the Timeless Way, a podcast that digs deeply into the ancient texts of Dao De Jing to uncover its timeless wisdom and discuss how to apply it to today's chaotic world. I'm Ian Felton, practicing psychotherapist and coder, and I'm joined by my co-host, executive coach and consultant, David Wong. Morning, David. Good morning, Ian. Good to see you. It's the day after after Christmas. How was your Christmas? Uh, it was good. How about yours? It was good as well. We we didn't think we were going to have a, a white Christmas. It was a very, very um, brown, dry December, but then all of a sudden we got a blizzard and now we're, we're covered in snow. Wow, that's nice. And so um, today we're going to move into chapter 65, which is going to focus on a, a Taoist concept of, of jur, which is knowledge or, or wisdom. And we're going to talk about what that means in, in Taoist practice. Great. And so I'm, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to just read to us the chapter 65 in Chinese, David. Absolutely. Gu zhi shan wei dao zhe, fei yi ming ming, jiang yi jiang yi yu zhi, ming zhi nan zhi, yi qi zhi duo, 故以治治国国之贼不以治治国国之福知此两者亦积事常知积事是谓玄德玄德深以远矣与物反矣然后乃至大顺 So thanks for that reading, it's 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 always so lovely to hear Lao Tzu um, read in the the original Chinese language, and and just a reminder of of how um, concise and 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 poetic the this language is. Yes, exactly. It's very poetic. Yes, and and so doing a translation of that chapter into. English, I'll start from the top. The ancient ones who followed the virtue of Tao were against making the people bright, but would keep them ignorant. The difficult governance of people arises by means of using an excess of knowledge. Therefore, using knowledge to govern makes the country deceitful. By not using knowledge to govern, the country prospers. To know these two things is to also use a model approach to governance. Always following this model is called mysterious virtue. Mysterious virtue, deep, far-reaching, is unconventional, but thus arrives at complete harmony. Mm -hmm. And so there's um, you know, a real focus, again, in that translation about knowledge. And, and I don't think we can necessarily translate it you know, one to one from this ancient um, you know, or m more ancient word of, of jir, mm. because there's, there's two words in, in Chinese. There's, there's jir and there's jir. Mm -hmm. And there's a tonal difference there to kind of you can you can hear it, but but jur is more like knowledge, and when we think about knowledge, but but jur is something else. And I'm wondering if if you would be willing to talk to talk to us about your understanding of of jur, the jur in chapter sixty five. Maybe any misconceptions about it and how it's different from knowledge from jur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think in ancient Chinese, uh, 
uh, 知 and 知 uh, sometimes were used interchangeably. So in other words, there's a ter terminology for for this. It's called a 通假字呃通假字 which means like sometimes when you say uh, when you when you see uh, 知 like uh, knowledge, right? It really means uh, uh, 知 uh, in in the ancient Chinese text.、Mm. Uh, I think in Dao De Jing,、uh, most of the time,、uh, all nearly all the time, uh, uh, zhi, uh, zhi, uh, was seen a little bit with uh, uh, a little bit of a negative connotation,、uh, especially when that zhi is defined as、uh, knowledge-driven kind of a zhi.、Mm. Uh, I think in.、Uh, Dao De Jing. There's another word,、uh, which is、uh, often used, Ming, like a、mm. like a、um, brightness or brilliance.、Mm -hmm. You know, with the the sun and moon, right?、Mm -hmm. The character, the character. That Ming、uh, is a discernment.、Uh, it means that、uh, or enlightenment.、Mm -hmm. uh, that is perceived more positively than Zhi. Yeah, it's even the the commonly used word for like they're a good student or they're a smart student has that word Ming in it. Song Ming. Yeah, Song Ming. Exactly, exactly. So that Ming is、um, uh, in 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 Lao Tzu's context is a is a is a is a great word. But a Zhi, if you do the a, a quick search uh, uh, when you have a digital copy of Dao De Jing.、Uh, Mostly, I think it's talked in the context of like zhi is something you know craftiness or you know just being clever.、Mm. And and so, wow, that's I don't think I mean I guess we do kind of think about it a little bit that way in in English, but we we almost put them in completely different camps. But there's there's something about this relationship then between. Zhi and Ming,、mm -hmm. and and I know you told us a little bit about that, but can you get into that maybe a little bit more deeper? Like, give us some examples of what would be an example of of Zhi and what would be an example of Ming. Ah,、uh, one of the in one of the chapters it says, "Ah,、uh, 知人者智，知己者明。Uh, we uh, studied one chapter of this.、Uh, knowing other people is considered to be a, 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 some some kind of knowledge or wisdom,、mm. but、uh, knowing yourself is more of a discernment and enlightenment.、Mm. So you are more enlightened. You are more awakened if you have,、uh, you know, a, a, a good, a, a complete knowledge of yourself. And and so of course from my my psychotherapy perspective, I I of course just start all kinds of bells start ringing off for me thinking about、mm. you know people who reflect on themselves and who try to understand their motivations for doing things and trying to understand you know why they have the relationship patterns that they have and trying to understand what their triggers are and. And all these things, we know that when when people can be conscious of as as much of the self as possible, then it's not that that makes life、um, not life anymore, but then it it but it does fundamentally change the quality of it, and it becomes qualitatively different. And so that's what I'm hearing around Ming is is almost like more the self actualization. Self-reflection, kind of understanding about the self deeply, but then I think then we can also、um, it helps us understand others. Where where Jur maybe leans in toward the superficial and is maybe more about like being crafty and and kind of skillful and maybe manipulating people, but not necessarily any any depth to it. Yeah, I think、uh, you know、uh, there's a framework that when people talked 
uh, in our uh, times about uh, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Uh, so the wisdom is kind of the, 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 the height of everything. It's the, it's the ultimate uh, kind of achievement uh, from uh, you know, data, information, knowledge, and, and the wisdom. Mm. Uh, but a lot of times, um, I find that a lot of the people uh, are very knowledgeable, but they, they may not be wise. Have you encountered like people around you, like in life like that, like who <laughs> has accumulated a lot of knowledge, but still seems to have very bad judgment on things? Well, I did have a long career in IT. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I saw that stuff all, all of the time where people who could be kind of technically mm -hmm. very um broad knowledge or um you know kind of understand things technically but then when when things would get applied or kind of um the bigger picture and that sort of thing would be kind of nonsensical and and it wouldn't necessarily be a very wise application of things um and and would also see um it it it's almost like uh, i mean in some ways i think you can use the can't see the forest for for the trees but i think that's only one aspect of it i, I think there's maybe even and more of like a a personal relationship sort of thing mm. someone who maybe they know a lot of facts about Mm -hmm. someone else and can r recite like people's favorite color, their birthday or, or whatever, but can't necessarily connect with someone on a, on a deeply emotional level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking really the core difference, uh, what, uh, between knowledge and wisdom. It seems to it seems to me like wisdom has that underlying pattern of things, right? It's not just like a bunch of facts. Mm -hmm. um, when somebody can understand that pattern and uh, you know, kind of act upon that pattern, we say somebody is maybe wise. Mm. It's not like the a bunch of you know facts. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, so, so when we're just a bunch of facts, we're not necessarily wise. And, and what this chapter is saying, that's not fill people's mind. If you're governing a country, that's not fill people's minds up with a bunch of, of facts. Mm -hmm. And so if we're, we talked a little bit about the personal but maybe if we can talk more about this particular chapter and and because it's talking about society, I mean, what does that actually look like if you were governing with with you know not using jur? I mean, what would that look like in in twenty twenty? That's a great question. Um... It might requires us to go back to the to the fundamentals, like what you know, what kind of it's you know, it's like this horse and cart thing, right? Mm. We don't want to you know let the cart like you know it's the uh, what what do you call it like a, a cart like driving the horse or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we, or, or wagging the dog. I think that's yeah, the tail that wags the dog. The dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in other words, like we have to ask ourselves, like, what kind of a society uh, we want to uh, build, or what kind of life uh, do we want to lead, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Mm -hmm. And instead of right now, I feel like there's a lot of. Uh, uh, 
the facts or even <laughs> not mm -hmm. facts, right? Sure. Right? But it's still jur, right? Like whether, because it doesn't lack context, it doesn't lack depth. So whether it's propaganda or just like a list of facts, the effects are kind of the same. It, it lacks wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does serve a purpose, though. I feel like the person or the people who disseminate that kind of information, mm -hmm. they must have a uh, end in mind. Mm -hmm. But it's just the end that may just serve their own purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, I feel like there's needs to be a, a, maybe a shared kind of a view of reality first. And then, you know, people can work together uh, and to, to build it. I mm -hmm. feel that is missing right now because everybody has their own view of reality. It's, harm, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to come together and uh, reach an agreement and say, this is something that we all value mm. and we let's build it together. Wow. And, and so uh, what I'm hearing then is that when, when, when the type of knowledge or, or propaganda or, you know, juror that's, that's used to govern in America right now, we're seeing, you know, each, each kind of side, if you will, is kind of creating its own worldview based upon that jerk. And, and now the society, like we're, what we're talking about, that when the country becomes, um, say, like there's this sort of like trying to outwit the other side and everything's about arguing your knowledge and that, you know, your knowledge is better than the other person's knowledge. And, it just becomes more and more polarized. And then we all try to just get very clever and cunning and the internet's full of memes and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to humiliate each other where what you're talking about kind of coming back to the source, coming back to the fundamentals, let's get back to where, you know, Let's let's let go of all this propaganda and let go of all of this knowledge that we think is so important and 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 find what our common ground is where where we're connected with each other kind of uh, emotionally again. Right, right, right. I feel right now uh, uh, everybody has some kind of a partial knowledge to say, right? The partial knowledge. It's mm. not the, the complete knowledge. Somehow, I feel like people are even starting to question the existence of a complete knowledge. Mm. The, like the, whether there's a kind of a, a shared truth or a, mm. a common truth. I feel everybody make up their own truth. Uh, and then it's so all fragmented. And mm. everybody is trying to uh like to to uh make their truth like it's the absolute like truth mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. it's partial mm -hmm. only when we all acknowledge uh you know there there's something out there uh even though we we do not have the complete understanding of it but we are all kind of a trying to piece together to see the big hole, and then maybe there's a chance of building up a uh, a, a shared destiny or something. Yeah, which I think that's why across the board, when you look at certain ballot initiatives or programs that get put out there that have more broad appeal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm it seems to be on the places where we all kind of have more of a common understanding. So I'll take two. Right. Um, $15 minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of Republicans and Democrats who are, are struggling financially and, and want to be better off. And so they're generally in, you know, and except for the, you know, uh, I would say the, business class of Republicans who obviously are against 
fifteen dollar minimum wage, but mm-hmm. but the voting populace, the people, mm-hmm. the people. I mean, even in Florida, they voted for this fifteen dollar minimum wage, which mm-hmm. obviously, red largely a red state, or at least has been a red state recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in support of that, this common ground, uh, the mm-hmm. other um, healthcare reform, mm-hmm. you know, the way of going about it might differ. But the point is, generally across the board, people feel like healthcare is too expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we don't get what we pay for. You know, the pharmaceutical companies have kind of corrupted the mm-hmm. country, mm-hmm. and. And and across the board, Democrats and Republicans are in support of of kind of reforming that. Right. If that's the case, then uh, does that lead to some kind of consensus, which leads to action? You know, like po- specific like policies based on that view. I think it 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 could and and in the sense of if, if we kind of go back to, um, you know, the chapter when it's talking about following this approach of not using, I'm just going to say propaganda instead of knowledge, just to make it clear what I'm talking about, like this divisive kind of, um, wedge issues and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you don't use that, the country prospers. When you do use it, the country kind of becomes chaotic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's why Biden won. I mean, here's someone who has kind of been moderate in the middle, Mm -hmm. not too extreme one way or another. and, And that's why he won not just the Democratic nomination but also won um the presidency because i think that people are so exhausted they're exhausted by that i mean it, it's happening and playing out just like how this chapter how lautza said mm-hmm. two thousand years ago that when when you do what we've been doing as a country it descends in into all this cunning um, deceitful way, and people are worn out by it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wasn't the is that a new phenomenon, or is it is it something that um, uh, when did that when like 以治治国, uh, 国之贼, right? Uh, how did we arrive at that state of like 以治治国? I mean, I'm not a historian, but I do mm-hmm. kind of try to follow some things and and be mm-hmm. somewhat o- aware. And 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 over and over again, and again, I don't know why. And I'm sure if we ever talk mm-hmm. to one of our listeners who's more of an expert on this, so often things point back to Ronald Reagan. Mm, I see. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you think so? Well, I mean, he was an actor, right? So I right. Mean, Right. And in some ways, it's kind of like almost, again, that sort of turn from, you know, politics instead of it being maybe someone with a sincere motivation to, you know, be a servant leader or a humble leader or whatever, mm-hmm. into more of a a figurehead for the more powerful forces behind the scenes of, you know, that you know, kind of hollowing out those positions in a way. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. What would be the exam- other examples of a uh, Is it like a uh, is like, you know, I when I was in college, I heard a term called a marketplace of ideas. Mm. You know, it's a terminology or like basically... Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the policies came out of the this competition competition mm-hmm. for uh you know uh, among the different ideas and and some better ideas win mm-hmm. uh, you know i was wondering uh right now if we're saying is it something like that mm-hmm. uh and that may lead to uh 
国之贼。嗯。Yeah, I'm just I'm thinking about obviously there there are these competition of ideas and the political system and and organizations. And, yeah, but then there's also after a certain point amount of corruption. Just like we're looking at these antitrust、um, cases against Google and Facebook, and of course Microsoft was in the same place twenty、mm -hmm. years ago. And and there's something about how do you preserve that even when, you know, wealth is being concentrated. I mean, we we look at, in some ways, I think、um, the wealth gap seems、mm -hmm. to be like maybe one of the main things to look at. That as wealth、mm -hmm. is kind of keeps kind of I mean trickle down, kind of going back to Reagan, right? Like trickle down. If if you if you make people If you make the rich as as rich as possible, it'll trickle、yes. down. And yeah, the trickle down economy. Yeah, yeah, but it's bullshit, right? Like, let's look、mm -hmm. at the you know the forty years since then. We have way more technology. We have way more、um, you know productivity,、mm -hmm. and we have all the wealth kind of going to fewer and fewer people while. You know the masses are getting poorer and poorer, and and wealth inequality keeps increasing in this country. Right. And so, you know, wealth creates power, and power creates truth, and and that's always going to squash ideas that it's threatened by. So then that kind of goes against then the marketplace of ideas. That won't happen because it won't happen. Because that、uh, marketplace of ideas assumes that the power you have a level playing field, right? Yes. And yes. then you can、uh, evaluate and、uh, assess the merits of ideas.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like it if you're in a situation in the workplace where you know there's someone who's dictatorial, right? And, yeah. And you know there's four people who are smart. And intelligent, and all have something to say, but if there's one person that has the power, and you know what's that going to do to the marketplace of ideas? Exactly, exactly. So if 以智治国 doesn't work, what's the alternative then? Well, I think it works when there's more equity. I mean, I think.、Um, I don't know what it will be like, or if it's even possible. I think we we romanticize hunter gatherers, where because people had to keep moving, no one really kept many possessions. Right. Okay.、Yeah. And and so then you know there wasn't the sort of hoarding, and and because it was much more clear how much. People needed each other. You know, if if we lose half the tribe to starvation and you know cold or or whatever, you know, we're not going to have enough people to kind of get through this next year. And so, of course, there again, people were much more receptive to equity and and. Um, everyone kind of having a say in in things, and again, I might be romanticizing it. I didn't live in a hunter gatherer tribe, but、mm -hmm. I think intuitively it makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But our society now is completely disconnected from that. I mean, Jeff Bezos could watch, you know, entire, I mean, millions and millions and millions of people die,、mm. and. He would probably still somehow end up ha having more money than he did before. Right, 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 right. So then, is it inevitable that uh, that uh, we are living in the society we are living in?、Uh, there's no way of getting back, if not all the way back, but to some level of、um, equity. It's a it's it's a really tough question, and it's like I I don't want to be pessimistic, but in some ways it feels like 
Pandora's box that, you know, once it's been opened, how do you put the lid back on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially at the extremes that we're seeing now. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to fathom. I mean, Jeff Bezos worth worth over a hundred billion dollars. I think Mark Zuckerberg, if he's not over a hundred billion dollars, is really close. And it's so hard to fathom that. I mean, a couple of people worth a quarter of a trillion dollars, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and half the world still, you know, struggling to just get through the day, trying to scrape together some pennies right right you talked earlier about the emergence like say uh biden right biden is trying to uh bring together kind of a uh to strengthen the middle in some mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. right giving this force uh we just talked about this uh, kind of the uh in the rich gets richer uh how is it possible then like somebody like biden uh will have like what kind of a levers does he have or power does he have to uh, bring people together i feel like mm. the voice of the people uh the votes seem to indicate that you know we can't let this divisiveness this uh you know extreme rich and poor wealth and poor poverty go on forever so we we need somebody to kind of a, to 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 mm. uh to build right to build it better mm -hmm. well i mean one thing and i don't think i don't know that i hear people talking about it that much but even though biden is a career politician mm -hmm. this is his last hurrah i mean he's 78 years old he doesn't right. have to he doesn't have to worry about a post presidency or whatever at this point his opportunity to actually have an historical legacy at his age and and with um with the state of the world is is obviously huge that maybe he only has 4 years as president but let's say the democrats pull off some miracle and win both senate seats in georgia i mean i, I think it, it it's possible i don't know how likely mm -hmm. it is but if that would ha happen i mean he really doesn't have anything to lose by trying to be as great of a president as possible because he's going to be 82 when if he lives through his entire term and and not much life left to live i mean this is really an opportunity for him to really truly be a president for the people without much to to lose afterward and i don't know how much people have really talked about that but to me i think that's a great opportunity for the people um you know someone being so advanced in age like they know that time is is running down and what do they have to lose and going against the the powerful elites Right, right, right. Going back to Lao Zi, uh, 与父反矣, 然后乃至大顺, right? The oh, last, wow. That's last sentence. Uh, I, I think I agree with you to a great, uh, I think personally he can, you know, he has a greater freedom to operate, right? To, mm -hmm. to act, mm -hmm. uh, to against this trend and, uh, try to connect uh to that uh Dao. Yeah, right. would you would you tell us more about um kind of I, I, I know you and I talked a little bit about this last line and it's it's again it's something that feels very in, intuitive. Mhm. Mm but this mysterious virtue being deep and far reaching and also unconventional but then arriving at harmony and you mentioned you know biden might be in a in a in a good position well to be unconventional and and maybe getting us closer to that harmony would i'd be curious to hear more of your thoughts on that mm. given his age 
Of course, age is not everything, but given his age and also all that I've been uh, listening and following, including you know the Christ Christmas knowledge, a uh, Christmas uh, message that he and uh, his wife delivered, uh, you know, over the in the uh, social media. Uh, somehow, I intuitively I got a sense that in him there's this xuan de. Hmm. Uh, in him, uh, so you know, as you said earlier, that he may have that um, wisdom uh, and you know uh, influence or, or determination to work against this bigger trends we're having, like uh, the bigger trends, but uh, but but uh, I mean societal trends. And get us back to, uh, you know, somehow to the. Uh, I'm not saying the hunter gatherer society, but mm. I'm saying the existence that uh, people are, are 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 yearning for. Mm. Mm. There seems to be mm -hmm. an opportunity or, or 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 the timing there. And what do you think most people in this country are yearning for? What are we really yearning for? Whether we're blue state, red state, you know, and I know those terms, we're trying to get rid of them because it's, it's hurting us. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, what are, what is America really yearning for? Uh, stability, uh, mm -hmm. a dignity, like a personal level, like mm -hmm. It being feel like first of all, you know, I don't worry. I have to worry about life, mm -hmm. living, right? Uh, whether it's the the you know for daily living or like a health health mm -hmm. issues. So everybody wants to have a at least a, a, don't doesn't feel like uh, to 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 worry about just a living. And secondly, have a chance to uh, express or or uh, kind of tap into their potential. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those two things. Mm. It, it's really to survive and to thrive. Mm -hmm. If I have to, just like mm -hmm. the uh, a lot of things in nature, you know. People want to, first of all, we want to uh, survive. Mm -hmm. And second, secondly, we want to, you know, as vibrant as possible. Mm -hmm. I think that's the basic thing. What, what, what do you think is what people are looking for? I mean, I think what you're saying makes, makes perfect sense. I mean, people, we, we can kind of look at, at foundationally. Mm-hmm. The first thing that people need is to feel safe. Yes, yes. And and so without that safety, people have anxiety. People have, mm -hmm. and we know that then anxiety disrupts our cognitions. And then if your cognitions are disrupted, you're going to make mistakes in your life. And then if you make those mistakes, now there that creates more stress. Like forget to pay a bill. Right. You know, and, and, and if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you get hit with a late fee, you know, that late fee now completely throws next month into disarray. And so first people need a sense of, of safety. And, and I think having so many people living paycheck to paycheck in this country, whether you're Democrat or, or Republican or, or independent, I think we need to make sure we always say independent because there's almost as many independents in the country as either political party. And most of the time, journalists don't even include them in the conversation, right? Like they talk about Democrats and Republicans, but don't mention independents who are as sizable of a, of a populace um, which I consider myself an, an independent. Mm -hmm. um, so that sense of safety that if you're living in 
a capitalist society where you know everything's sort of a commercial transaction people do need to feel safe by knowing that that there's a safety net there hmm that's a that's a great great point um what you're saying uh reminds me of like my first experience of coming to this country um as a like an international student somehow i felt uh once i'm here i do not uh i it's always like psychologically it's always a sword hanging over mm. uh my my head mm, um, sort of damocles yeah yeah cuz i i feel like uh back at home i have let's say uh i have my relatives hmm. uh and uh, my my parents hmm. but in here i'm on my own so if i don't have money then hmm. you know i i i cannot uh, i cannot depend on other people mm -hmm. um but now i feel like the chinese society has evolved more toward you know like uh what i uh, hear like it it wasn't the china i left mm -hmm. so i feel like globally i think this safe thing safety thing is a very um very interesting one we uh, objectively i feel like okay i mean i can eat i have enough uh to to ha why why don't i feel safe mm -hmm. that's is is it more like a psychological psychological thing Am I starving? Mm -hmm. I'm not literally like, you know, I know it may be still in some uh, parts of the world, uh, people, you know, don't have food to eat, right? Mm -hmm. So so they are not safe. Uh, but for me, I feel like that is more psychological thing. I feel I do not have the connections mm -hmm. with other people. Like, mm -hmm. how do you feel safe? One of the things you feel safe because you feel like we are all together mm, like mm -hmm. you you feel safe right mm -hmm. but i feel like that kind of sense of safety i lost a long a long time ago wow i mean that's profound i mean it makes me think i mean how how could we feel safe now in this country when you talk about it's our sense of connectedness to each other that makes us feel safe, that makes us feel like a country. And when uh when we gov when we're governed by this jerk that, you know, now we literally feel so much in this country that half of the country is is almost our enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to give you another example, I think uh I think like, for example, in China, in the Chinese family, uh, you have several kids, right? Mm. Some people, some kids are uh, smarter, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, like, mm -hmm. let's say I have a, yeah. a, my, my brother, right? Like mm. a brother and like, it's always the parents that mm. uh, kind of, uh, you know, take more from the brother mm. uh, who is kind of a more, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. more successful. Mm -hmm and uh, cover the other brother mm. uh, we i you know like we always feel like you know this is not fair but somebody like everybody uh, accepts it mm. and, and it's becoming the norm you are supposed to take the the, the people who have more and uh, mm -hmm. and and help out the weaker one just mm -hmm. for the i i don't know for survival yeah. or for family reasons yeah the more i think it think about it, the more I feel there's some wisdom in it. Mm -hmm. I feel like even the people who are smarter, like uh, who are smarter, when they get older, they are weaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So somehow, you know, there's a, I mean, like Lao Tzu say uh, in another chapter saying, sometimes nature has its way of taking the mm -hmm. more, taking the stuff from the more and to help the less. Like mm -hmm. when you see the, the valleys and the hills, right? Mm -hmm. You take, Sometimes over time you take all the 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 the, 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 the you make the mountains yeah. low. Yeah, the peaks kind of get leveled off, and that sediment goes down in the valley and makes it fertile. And 
yeah yeah grow and mm. yeah yeah uh, but not in the society or the, in the system we create mm-hmm. it's almost like uh <laughs> you, you take hurts. more of the weaker one i mean yeah. you take advantage of them you yeah. take advantage of their weaknesses the and, smarter mm-hmm. ones get uh, they, they get more and more they get smarter mm-hmm. is that against the nature i don't know Seem, but I, seems like it yeah yeah and and there's a shame attached to the people who uh who are not making it uh you know they call them losers or, or things like that you, mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. even the successful ones like uh you know, the other day I talked to a, a student, uh, 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 like a junior at Harvard, you know, like I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm mentoring him. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of anxiety because he feels like if he doesn't go to Wall Street, he will be a loser. Mm. What a terrible pressure to have as a young person. Yes, yes. But where does that come from? Yeah, our society is failing these these people, and and obviously some of it's the family culture as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that kind of brings me back to some when you were talking about coming to this country. There, I I could hear there was some profoundness in in this um, what you were seeing, and and I want to make sure that that we address that because you were talking about this this China that you left and how you felt there and then how you felt when you arrived and kind of that, that sense of being on your own and then seeing how China now ha- has also changed in a way. I'm, can you talk more about that? That just seemed to be really important and I felt like we skipped past it too quickly. I see. Um, let's see. So there's a certain, you know, uh, aspect of like, you know, adapting to a new environment, right? You you make friends uh, in a new environment, but I feel that I left behind something more deeper than that, which is like I have to like I. It's like a boy uh, coming from the countryside. Mm-hmm. You have to make it in a big city. I have to make it. Hmm. If I can't make it, it will be a shame. You know, hmm. I can't. I cannot go back. Hmm. That kind of thing. Hmm. And in here, uh, I can uh, learn how to ask for help. You know, learn the skills. But ultimately, it's me. I, I cannot like if I you know have no money in my pocket. I I cannot. I cannot say oh. Uh, you know, I can only deal with institutions. Maybe like a credit card. You know, mm. I borrow some money, mm. but no one will give me the money uh, unless I can make it my own. So mm. that's the the rule of the game. Mm. So that makes me always feel like, you know, I have to worry about the next thing. You know, I have to. The, uh, yeah, it's like you can't rely on anybody, like even mm. like your friends, like I have friends here, mm-hmm. but. Uh, can you just like uh, mm-hmm. go to your friends and say, oh, you know, uh, I guess it's the, maybe it's the flip side of uh, taking responsibility. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a good thing to say everybody needs to be, you know, we, we encourage independence, don't mm-hmm. we? Right? Mm-hmm. Like we are on our own. Mm-hmm. But it's a relative thing, I guess. Like the more we encourage that independence, the more maybe we are building that castle around ourselves. Because we're sufficient. We don't need anybody anymore. Everybody, Mm -hmm. everything you think about is like how to get get myself stronger and and more solid on a more solid background. uh, ground. Even though there's that paradox there that we talked about that actually it's our feeling of connectedness to each other that gives us a sense of safety. And, and even, you know, we can see it that no matter how much wealth I, I build up, 
if I don't feel connected to other people, I'm still going to have that sense of insecurity. You know, well, well, what if something really bad happens? Who, who, you know, who's really going to help me? Because there's no one around. I, everything that I do has to be done through an institution. Yes, yes. Through a hospital, yeah. through the government, through a business. Those people don't care about me. They care about my wallet. Uh, yes, yes. That's how the system works, right? Mm-hmm. They will, so it takes a lot of the feelings out of this whole thing. It's mm-hmm. like everything is like uh, socialized or maybe profet- professionalized, mm-hmm. if you see what I mean. Even like a death, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's a, maybe a personal thing in the past when somebody dies, you know, you have this, uh, you know, real grief. I mean, mm-hmm. it, there's emotion, there's chaos. There's a lot. There's a lot of things. Now it's like technically, professionally handled without much of a headache. Mm. Boom! It's done, right? So, mm-hmm. so, so, so that kind of thing. But then you need to, in order to uh, to do that, you need to accumulate to ac- accumulate a lot of money yeah. and uh, resources to do that in a decent way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that everything now we we took these deep human relationships and, and interconnectedness where we we truly felt like our connection to one another made us safe, mm-hmm. and, and that's our evolutionary past too. I mean, that's a hundred percent. That's how our nervous systems are are wired. That you know, we we actually get soothed. I mean, look at monkeys when, when they're just at, at rest, when they're not eating or, or moving to another place, they're sitting around grooming each other and kind of petting mm-hmm. each other. And, and, and what that is literally doing is soothing each other's nervous systems because they know like nature wants to kill them. There's things just outside of their little zone that want to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, starvation is, is around the corner. And and them petting each other and and being close to each other is literally what soothes their nervous systems. And now we're talking about, you know, creating a system that makes everyone an atom. It's no wonder we're all so anxious and depressed. Yeah, yeah. I think the original rationale for doing that is to, you know, make everything efficient. I think, mm-hmm. right? I mean... Uh, yeah, I think uh, living in the messiness or kind of what you just described, like how monkey do things that doesn't seem to be very useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think pe- someone will come along and say, oh, I can make this more efficient. Mm. But then once you achieve that efficiency, you don't have much left, like the, 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 all no. the stuff that makes human, us human, or makes it, the makes life it's gone and it's gone yeah we we factored out our humanity we factored out our entire sense of safety in in the spirit of you know generating more financial security which has done the opposite it hasn't given us real security at all yeah so that's going back to this chapter yeah i think that's the human uh, Mm. because that leads to <laughs> seems to lead to where we are now mm-hmm. that kind of a seemingly like seeming uh, smart smartness or mm-hmm. cleverness mm-hmm. we thought you know we we're very clever you know we make this mm-hmm. uh, faster efficient cheaper mm-hmm. but we end up in in, in uh, uh tearing up the uh fabric right the social fabric or I mean, even before social fabric, I would say the whole cosmic fabric in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And and this is where you 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 won't you won't hear me giving very many compliments to organized religion, but I know that when we survey people's mental health, that regular churchgoers feel more mentally healthy on average than others. And, and I think this mm. is exact, exactly why, you know, 
they believe that there's people there that actually care about them and and they're close to them and they and they feel that connectedness yeah exactly ah that's that's interesting and so there's there there's this like i have this very heavy depressed feeling just thinking about seeing how this you know capitalist market driven efficient industrialized now kind of post industrialized right like mm -hmm. we're not making things in america anymore we're we're kind of these like it's a service industry or like a, a creative you're either sort of this like thought worker or you're a gig worker and there's mm -hmm. like not a whole lot in between and and you know we've kind of created this situation where everyone now is focused on accumulating more jur and not so much ming and and there's this heaviness to it knowing that we're kind of tearing up what we actually need in, in our human um to feel safe right well that servicing the or uh, service uh you know, like you categorize the society right now as a more post-industrial, uh, you know, service society. But that service, would that go through a kind of a renaissance of people connecting, right? When you think about service, you're thinking about people caring for each other. But it's fake. I mean, it's not real care. It's still, a tra it's still transactional. I mean, you might have just given me a full body massage that felt like I'm getting that like monkey kind of connecting with my soothing emotional system. But if I don't have the money to pay for another one, like you're not going to talk to me. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. And, and, and so what I'm wondering, we just have a couple more minutes and, you know, I, I want to hear from you. What do you think, what's your number one thing that you think maybe something that you're doing now or or something that you think is really important that people can do to kind of be aware of am i feeding sure this kind of like knowledge that kind of corrupts society or or cultivating ming where you know cultivating more wisdom what's your kind of number one kind of practical thing to maybe leave us with um I think be being more knowledgeable about uh, our everyday kind of existence. I think the that kind of a sense of awareness mm. is oh, really yeah. the, is the key. Yeah, because with that awareness, that awareness uh, metaphorically, I can call it light. Right, mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. kind of sh sheds light on things that mm -hmm. are happening during our waking hours mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. uh so with that help of that light we can make better choices and we can be more uh, uh calm even though we're in the middle of some kind of a chaos mm -hmm. i think that knowledge uh can be developed uh day by day just by being in tune with it yeah that's what i value the most and then if i have extra time maybe i can uh read books or listen to podcasts even those i feel you know i'm looking for books or podcasts that can um share insights mm. insights that word in, in itself it's i i do not wa want to waste my time just like listening just to accumulate learn mm. about more you kind of useless things mm. but really the kernel of that conversation or of that chapter in the book i read mm. that can shed light on our human existence mm. so i think that's valuable well thank you david and thank you to our listeners for joining us and exploring Tao Te Ching while we're all trying to understand how to walk 
the timeless way. Thank you. <laughs>